Hello, my name is Laura Singh. I recently graduated from the University of Texas at Austin. I got a Bachelor of Science in Physics and certifications in Computer Science and Statistics and Scientific Computation. This is my senior thesis project. It's a resonator cavity. In recent years, human activities such as oil drilling and pile driving has created increased amounts of noise underwater. And this increased noise can have potential negative effects on aquatic life. The way the resonator cavity works is it's very similar to a bubble in that it tries to attenuate or reduce the amount of sound that's propagating underwater. It's called a cavity because it traps air underwater in this cavity inside it. When a pressure wave or a sound wave approaches a region of water surrounding the resonator cavity filled with air. There are pressure fluctuations due to the sound wave in the water surrounding the bubble. What happens with these pressure fluctuations is it causes an air pocket to shrink and grow. If the frequency of that sound wave is of the bubble's resonance frequency, the bubble starts to really go crazy. It transforms some of that sound energy into thermal energy. What that means is that if you have sound going through water, it sees this resonator cavity, and when the sound passes on the other side of it, it's not going to be as loud. We did not know how this resonator cavity would work at first. I recently was talking to a friend, and I said I was in underwater acoustics. And he said, so does that mean you stick your head underwater and scream and get somebody else to listen and see if they can hear? And I started to think about it, and that is kind of what we do. Only instead of sticking our heads underwater and screaming, we use a, I used as a sound source a piston and an electrical mechanical shaker to drive the piston and create a harmonic sound source. Instead of sticking your ears underwater, I used an underwater microphone that we call a hydrophone. Basically, an experimental test of the resonator cavity so that we can find the resonance frequencies and Q factors of different volumes of air trapped in this resonator cavity. And that gives us an idea of how it will behave and how potentially other resonator cavities of different shapes and sizes and even arrays of resonator cavities work in a real world situation. This is a simulation of the resonator cavity being tested in the tank. The smaller rectangle represents the cylindrical resonator cavity filled with air, and the larger rectangle represents the cylindrical steel tank that we use to test the cavity. Inside the tank, it's filled with what we define as properties of water, and inside the resonator cavity, we also gave it properties of air. And then what we do is we create a mesh in the finite element software, and that allows the entire system to be broken up into small pieces and you define physics and you define equations of physics and properties for each of those small elements and then the software solves those equations for you so you don't have to grind through a million computations by hand. And that is why simulations are very useful so that we can predict how other resonator cavities of different shapes and sizes will behave. This project began with the experimental tests of the resonator cavity in the test tank. And it was interesting because the resonance frequencies changing, varying with the different volumes of air were not exactly the results we expected based on our previous experiences with bubbles. So that's part of why the finite element simulation was so important because we wanted to check the experimental data and it turns out this, the finite element numerical modeling agreed beautifully with the experimental data. And that led us to try out some new lumped element modeling using an underwater Helmholtz resonator model. And it turns out that, were, that described the free field version of the finite element numerical modeling. And so it was very exciting to go from that experimental stage when you're really not sure if what you're doing is right and you're, you're getting these weird results to finally at the end realizing that that really is the way the resonator cavity behaves and even forming a description of it through computation 
anthrolumped element modeling. This is just one of the exciting projects that's happening in acoustics in the Texas Acoustics Program here at UT Austin and at Applied Research Laboratories. Thank you so much for watching today. Hope to see you around the Texas Acoustics Program soon. Hook'em.